June 2039. It is a time of unrest. Though the Third World War is still fresh in many people's minds, the world slowly returns to a semblance of normalcy. As it always does, life goes on. And amidst this tense madness, on the dreary streets of some rural Californian town, in walks a stranger. The sky is dark, clouds overhead. That time of day when someone roaming the streets will be held to twice as much scrutiny. The street lights above glare, their slight halo irritating the man. With a scowl, he draws his hood further over his head. With his trench coat dragging behind him, he does his very best to keep a low profile. But though this stranger to this land is outwardly silent, his mind is racing with thoughts. I must be careful not to be spotted. After all this effort to escape, it would be... disappointing to get caught now. Wait. Just a postman. Better check my phone. Ah, so it still serves this reconfigured purpose well. I'm out of danger for now. Yet though I must put even more distance between my pursuers and I. My presence here is suspicious, and avoiding suspicion will be paramount to survival. I should stop for tonight. But how to explain such an incursion into one's property at such a late hour from such a stranger as I? This is not like home. I cannot come and go from other people's houses as I please. Humans have... different standards. How to abide by them? I have not eaten since yesterday either. I have been too caught up in simply escaping. Still, I remember that pie on the windowsill. Some poor soul invested real time and care into it, and they did not deserve to have it taken from them like so. But I had no choice. Just like I had no choice but to trade most of it when I was... caught. Luckily, it wasn't by those who seek to capture me, who hound me even now, but rather just twelve-year-old gang with crude blades, common people, turned to violence by their circumstances, almost like me. They demanded my satchel, not knowing what was inside. Obviously, I have come too far to give that up, so I had to offer the pie instead, and they let me go. I am honestly a bit lucky not to have been caught by my true pursuers yet. I should check once more. <laughs> my battery is running a little low. No problem, of course. I have several portable chargers and another spare phone. But that is by no means obvious to anyone who'd look at me. I know what I have to do now. With that, our mysterious stranger sets off through the streets once more. Meanwhile, in a nearby home, the Constantine family, Mr. Ryan Constantine, Mrs. Claire Constantine, their daughter Kara, and their son Ben, talk over dinner. Or at least, they try to. So, Dad, how's your work going? Sorry, Kara. No time. I have a whole bunch of models to make. My bosses at Heisenberg and Company aren't going to be happy if I don't get them in today. Today? They're working you to the bone, Ryan. Is there anything I could do to help? Or... Don't bother me when I'm working. You always say that, Dad. And you're always working, so... Doesn't make it any less true. When I'm working, you better leave me alone. What are you doing anyways, Dad? You code, you model, you work all the time on that project of yours. What's more important than, say, Ben? You take that back! Pew pew! No you! Pew pew! No you! Pew pew! Pew pew! pew, pew. He seems like... He seems like he's doing fine. Come on, Dad. What about, I don't know, game night or something? What about all the times we'd go out together and have fun, or even just go out for a walk? We haven't done any of those in... We'll talk about it if I finish my work. Don't worry, Kara. Y your father's a smart man. He'll be done with his work sooner or later. I've got it. You go finish your work, Ryan. Then we can spend some time with the kids. Have some fun. 
Who is it? Is it Mr. Jackson? No, it's not your boss, Ryan. It's a stranger. I think he needs our help. He looks tired, desperate. Hello. Would you mind if I came in momentarily, just to charge my phone? Why are you here? Where are you from? Where I am from is not important. Where I am now is. Could I just, for five minutes, charge this phone? Please, come in. Hey, who are you? Merely a man in need, and I thank you for your kindness and hospitality. Why are you here? Explain yourself! I am a, uh, a fugitive, to be honest. I hope humans, uh, you specific humans, value honesty just as much as my family. A fugitive? What do you do to be a fugitive? I am uh, wrongfully hunted, sir. A case of mistaken identity, that's all. Why bother me? Why not explain yourself to the authorities or something? My identity has been mistaken with that of a dead man. And where I come from, we do not speak ill of the dead. Please, you look hungry. We have some leftovers if you like. Oh, oh no, I couldn't accept such a thing. This is your property. I have no right to any of it. No, really. If you're innocent and on the run, we should at least help you as much as we can before you're on your way again. Well, if you insist, I suppose I have an obligation to accept such a kindness from you. With greatest humility, of course. Where should I sit? You can have my seat. I'm done. Oh, thank you, sir. Are you a vampire? I'm sorry? You didn't come in until Maha invited you in. So you're a vampire. Either that or an alien. So which is it? Ben, not everything is one of your stories. That's... incorrect, actually. Everything is a story, recorded forever in history. You are part of my story now, just as I am part of yours. But, no, young... Ben, I believe? I am neither vampire nor alien. I am... human, just like you. Are you sure? So you're telling me if I flick water onto you right now, you won't melt into nothingness? <laughs> no, not at all. Ben! Oh, so you thought just because normal water doesn't affect you, you can lie to me? Whatever do you mean? I need holy water, obviously! With that, the youngest Constantine runs off to the pantry to find some salt. And the priest. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here, we have some paper towels. Thank you. What an odd little boy. Ben's like that all the time. Always thinking about stories and tales. He's a little immature like that. And you? I suppose you're not the storyteller type. No, not really. Why do you ask? Well, where I come from, it is custom to ask. For all have their place in my... in my town. Every person has a job, a passion, and we have built ourselves to accommodate such desires. Your brother, for instance, will be training with the greatest lore keepers of my town even today. And where do you come from? Uh place. Far away. You wouldn't know it. Oh! Kara knows many places! Could be a historian, she could. Alright. My home is a place called Eleve Hidium. Far from here. <laughs> Do you know of it? <laughs> ah, so you still have a little work to do before you can express such confidence. You must know, where I come from, such boldness would not be tolerated. Not without the knowledge to... to reinforce such an attitude. If you like your home so much, why don't you go back there right now? <laughs> I never said I liked it. 
Home is a difficult place for me to think of. You and your brother just remind me so much of all the people I used to know there, that's all. Why are you here anyways? Weren't you here just to charge your phone or whatever? Can't you go and leave us alone already? Kara! Be nice to our guests. That said, if you don't mind me asking, Mr... Why did you stop? Well, I would like to know your name, Mr... Oh, apologies. I am not accustomed to the regional dialect of this area. What do you call it, this region? Mom, he's deflecting the question. Answer the question! Alright. I doubt you will be able to pronounce my true name, so you may refer to me as... Janus. It will do. This is excellent food, by the way. I would like to express my renewed gratitude for your hospitality, Mrs... Constantine. Mrs. Constantine, it is really no problem. Say, didn't you say something about how you were on the run from the cops or something? I did. Would you mind explaining what happened? Why you're on the run and all? Yeah, I'm sure you'll have some amazing story about how you did something for the greater good, but the authorities disagreed and now you're running. That'll be it. <laughs> well, that is accurate. See, one of the... Scions, the most intelligent minds of my town, wanted to build a device, and I aided him because I respected him. I wanted to do my part for my community, and I could not say no to him. But when we finished the device, he wanted to use it for a most terrible purpose. I could not allow him to do that, and he attempted to kill me over it. In the resulting struggle, he... He impaled himself on a sharp metal blade in his workshop. You expect us to believe he just fell over and died? Like that? Well, yes. We crafted this device in a blacksmith's shop. Naturally, there was much scrap metal lying around, some of it dangerous. He took a bad step and... A tragedy, I'm sure. Indeed. A tragedy it was. And I was accused of his murder. Well, it was an accident, admittedly, I was the most obvious culprit in the case. Why didn't you say you were innocent? You are, aren't you? If I professed my innocence, I would have had to explain how he, the Scion, had forced, had caused his own death, brought his own fate upon himself. And like I said in my home, it is forbidden to speak ill of the dead like so. Now, once it was clear that the authorities were going to be coming after me, I had no choice but to flee. Luckily, my people have a strong naval tradition. I had been trained in sailing and boating since I was a small boy. I procured a boat and quickly made my escape. See, Mom's already taking his side. She pities this random man too much already. Dad, well, I can't blame him for his suspicion. If this guy sticks around for too long, Mom and Dad are bound to argue, aren't they? Now I could ask this Janus guy nicely, real subtly to leave, but he seems like the type to see for that. I could... Oh no! Mr. Janus, I'm, I'm so sorry. Kara! What have you done?! <laughs> no worries, Mrs. Constantine. All is well, and my phone is waterproof, thankfully. As the three stare at the fallen phone for a tense moment, Janus calmly picks up his device, its face shattered and splintered, its cracks weaving in every direction possible. And as they gaze upon this labyrinth of cracks, a thought goes through each of their heads. Finally, a stroke of good fortune. A shame that it must come at the emotional expense of these Constantines, but all the better for me. I should hope that one day, when I get out of this mess, I will be able to repay this rapidly incurring debt to these kind humans. Oh no, poor Mr. Janus. A poor pitiful man. To walk around in this area in such a starry state, and now resting in the warm home with a warm meal for the first time in who knows how long, he breaks such a valuable possession. Oh my dear heart. I'm 
I'm sure Ryan will have some tools that can fix this, though. I must fix this somehow! Ugh. Why is Mom going to invite him to stay over longer? Why, why, why? Oh, this one I know. You know, my husband has some tools that could fix that. I'm sure he could do it if he has any free time. In the meantime, we have a spare bedroom. If you like to stay while we get this sorted out, I'm so, so sorry for this. Nothing to be sorry for, Mrs. Constantine. It was a mere error on my part, and I can't accept any more from you than I already have. Claire, could you bring me my toolbox? The window frame's loose again. Excuse me, I'm going to go get that for him. The whole house has been a little shaky and in disrepair since the war. Wait, I was a carpenter back home. Among other things, but I have some skill. Allow me to fix this broken window for you. It's the least I could do. Alright, I'll see what I can do about your phone. I can extend my welcome for these acts of kindness. And surely these Constantines will be thankful and offer further refuge from the Krakora. I think we will both benefit, and... Benjamin! Sorry. Couldn't find a priest. After wiping the slightly salty water from his face, and while Ben laments how his vampire-killing exploits had only been held back by a lack of a holy man, Janus procures a toolbox from a nearby closet and heads upstairs to lend a helping hand to Mr. Constantine. Ah, Claire, finally. Give me the hammer. This nail just won't budge. Janus hesitates for a moment before entering, noticing all sorts of belongings and clothes scattered around. Mr. Constantine works at a worn desk in front of him, code and some sort of stimulation filling the screen. I am not your wife, but I am willing to help if you would accept such aid. You? You're still here? Let me alone, let me work. Sir, I am only here to help. I can fix your window while you complete your work. It'll only take a moment. Seriously? No, get out! I'll just do it myself. What are you standing there for? Go on, get out! If you wish. Mrs. Constantine? What kind of work is your husband into? Oh, he works for this video game company. They're nearing the completion of one of their projects, but the workload has... It's been difficult for Ryan, for sure. Why do you ask? No reason. Benjamin, I have a question. What is it? Are you going to ask where the garlic is so you can burn it? <laughs> no, of course not. I was actually wondering. Your family, if someone were to give them gifts, what would they like? You mean like Santa Claus or something? It's nowhere near December, Mr. Vampire. Santa... Claus? Who is he? Uh, to you. Big, fat, red guy who goes around giving presents for Christmas, you know? Now let me think about it. Hmm. I've got it! Now, if Santa were to come around, I know what I'd like. I like these kinds of figures, Mr. Janus Vampire. So I can play with them, make stories with them, all that. Of course. And your sister? Your parents? Hmm. Well, care is really smart, right? So probably a textbook or something. But no, that's really me. So a puzzle or something. She'd probably get it done in a few minutes, hours at most, but she'd enjoy the challenge at least. Mom, well, she's always talked about maybe decorating our house a little more. Never got around to it, though. And Dad, I'm not so sure. He works all the time. Well, at least I have more time to play with my figures. So yeah, that's what I'd say, Mr. Vampire. Understood. Thank you, Ben. I will keep this in mind. A couple hours later, the entire house is silent, asleep, save for Janus, who is still awake in his guest room. He'd showered and shaved for the first time in a long while, yet he still thinks about just what he could do for these people who have opened their hearts and home to him. 
as quietly as he can, using the light foot step of his people. He sneaks up the stairs to Mr. Constantine's workroom. He switches on the dimmest setting of the nearby lamp, and glances down at the beaten keyboard. Analyzing the most battered keys, Janus begins to guess Mr. Constantine's password. Frustratingly, it takes him about seven tries, but eventually the computer lets him in. He notes immediately the efficient layout Mr. Constantine had set up for himself. There is a to-do list in the corner of the desktop, ordered by importance and highlighted by level of completion. The rest of the desktop is dedicated to the main workspace. There's a beautifully rendered landscape sitting next to a plain window of code. But he has no time to address these for now. He notes the resources at Mr. Constantine's disposal, each accessible with the click of a button, and then begins his work.